Okay, so now we're on to tax deduction. I'm gonna press, I wanna be guided. I'm gonna press yes, because I do have two children and I wanna see if I'm eligible for the, um, the EITC. Yeah, and everyone, like it says in the guide, should click yes on this because the earned income tax credit is eligible to current and former foster youth for the year 2021 and the youth who are experiencing homelessness. So basically everybody should check yes uh, from for this box and then click continue. All right, so the first deduction that comes up is actually a really big one. It's about $8,000 total per child of childcare expenses that you might have paid out of pocket while you were going to school or work. Now that could be to a child care provider or to a babysitter that you paid. Either way, what you do is if you did have out of pocket for child independent care expenses, you would click yes. And then on the next slide, when we get there, you can go ahead and click that. It will actually ask for you for some specific information. So um, it will say, did you pay the expenses for a qualifying dependent while you were working or actively looking for work or school? And so you would click yes and continue. And then what it actually asks you is the information about who provided that child care. So it could be a person, just an individual like, oh, it was my sibling or it was my aunt or uncle who provided child care. You would get their social security number or ITIN number and you would enter their first and last name and their information. And if you scroll down a little bit, it'll show you that um, it'll actually ask for their phone number. So you enter that person's phone number. But if you go to like busy B daycare, um, it'll actually have a business number. And then you enter that business information and you just ask that child care provider for a receipt for the whole year of how much you paid them. Okay, so then you would hit continue. Okay, so on the next page, it actually will ask who was the child care for and however many children you have like or dependents, their names will pop up and you select who you paid for care for. So in this case, Brooklyn is just selecting um, the and that and then they put in the amount paid in that year. So here's where you would just enter how much is paid. And again, it's a big credit up to $8,000 uh, that can reduce what you owe in taxes. And some of that uh, you actually get back in cash. So then we hit continue. Now, if you paid more than one child care provider, you can enter more, but you can just hit no and continue if it was just the one. Now you'll see a summary of the, the babysitter who was paid, the amount that you paid them, and, uh, and we go on from there. So you can click continue. No dependent care benefits. Um, that's usually more common for older folks. Uh, no, no. Okay, so now we're at a list of credits. And the first thing we all wanna check is the recovery rebate credit, which indicates how much we received in the third stimulus payment. The third stimulus payment uh, was $1,400 per, per eligible person. So if you did receive it, you click yes, and you enter in 1400. If you have a child like Brooklyn, uh, they both qualify for $1,400. So it'd be $2,800 received. So the other option is to say, no, I didn't get a, a stimulus payment. So if you didn't get it, which is unfortunately common for a lot of foster youth is they might not have filed and the IRS didn't have their information. So here you would actually click no and you would see that return change in the amount by 1400. You'll get that back right now when you file. Okay, so the next main credit is actually for college students or trade school students, anyone that's paying uh, for a program of higher education. So that could be, you're gonna get your electrical degree or you're at a college institution, whatever it is, you you qualify for education credits. So. Um, we also already talked about this in the income section um, and we wrote in our scholarship and grant amount. So yes, we did do that and we click continue. Now, who was the college student? In this case, it was Brooklyn. Continue. And did we have a 1098T, a tuition form from our school? Yes, you get that from the financial aid office or the bursar's office and you can usually either log into your online student portal to find that 
or you can call them and ask for a copy, or you can go into the financial aid office yourself and get a copy right then and there. Now, you usually say yes to the first question, did you receive the form? And was box two filled out? You say yes or no, it's usually no. You just have to look at the form itself, so no. And then you actually enter in the information, we say key it as you see it, for your school. So here's where you just type in the name of your school and everything as it is on the 1098T tuition statement. So in this section, now that we've entered the tuition information, this is really important part. And it's kind of tricky sometimes for foster youth or youth who have higher levels of scholarships and grants. So what you do wanna look for, there's a tuition paid box. There's also the grants box and the other qualified expenses. But for people who have higher scholarships and grants than um, tuition paid and other expenses, we actually entered that in a different way earlier in the income section. And what you wanna do here is put in from the number in box one from the 1098T tuition paid, you enter that information in that box. We're gonna skip the grant section because we put it in a different way. And then we also enter in the other qualified expenses. So what that means is any money that you spent out of your pocket or out of your scholarships and grants for books, supplies for school, anything mandatory for class. So for example, if you're a nursing student and you had to get a stethoscope and scrubs to do your course, that's all included. If you're an art student and a photography major and you had to buy film and camera and all these things for your class, it's all wrapped into your qualified expenses. If you're an economist and you're studying that and you bought a $500 book, that's what goes here. So Brooklyn, Tell us about the qualified education expenses you had and how much that came out to. Um, I would say about $1,200. I did buy a laptop and um, the books that I had to purchase throughout both of the semesters. Great. So that brings your qualified education expenses and it shows you the summary here and then we can continue. So now we actually have to answer questions if we qualify and we and Brooklyn would. So you say, uh, has the... American Opportunity Tax Credit already been claimed for four years? No. Was the student enrolled at least half time? Yes. Did the student complete the first years of higher education before? No. Did the student have a felony drug conviction before the end of 2021? No. Continue. So as you see here, there's a couple of options for the credit and the American Opportunity Tax Credit is of the greatest value. So we're gonna select that box. So it's a $1,600 credit that will benefit Brooklyn on their return. And if you look in the right-hand corner, you see that the amount of the federal return has increased significantly. Okay, now this is the one I was talking about earlier, the earned income tax credit. For the first time, current and former foster youth or youth who are homeless in this country will qualify if they're ages 18 to 24. You still have to be 25 or older. So everyone needs to check yes and click continue, and then you can click continue. Now, you didn't, you might not have noticed it, but the federal section already went up a little bit because Brooklyn, in fact, does qualify for that, and the tax credit's already been applied there. So here's a little bit different um, item. If you adopted someone and you can write off those expenses, you click yes, if not, click no. If you own a home uh, and you have property ownership, Click yes, you're lucky. Most of us are going to say no. All right, charitable contributions is one that's more common. So if you made any cash donations to charity, nonprofit, um, or you know you paid online or you went to an event, paid a ticket for a fundraiser, any of those things that went to a 501c3 um, can be counted here and you get a one for one dollar match. So up to $300 back on your taxes. If you're married filing jointly, it's 300 per person in that married couple, so 600 total. So Brooklyn, did you actually make any charitable contributions in 2021? Yes, I did. Okay, great. So you would click continue. You would just say yes again. And here's where you actually put in the information. So the charity name Brooklyn donated to just in time for foster youth. And that's a, it's a nonprofit for dedicated to foster youth. So 
Um, you just put the day that you made that donation. So it looks like in July. And then how much was donated? $285. So that's great. And you'll see that when you click continue, it'll ask if you made any other donations to charity. And so you can keep entering these amounts until you get up to that 300 level. Uh, this is just if you use your vehicle to volunteer. And this one is if you use, made non-cash contributions. So if you donated clothing or other items to, to some organization, you would put that here and, and fill out the right box. Now, medical expenses, if you have out-of-pocket medical expenses, you could fill this out and keep track. Um, uh, this is really helpful if you are kind of itemizing your de deductions, which isn't as common. But if you have out-of-pocket medical, dental, vision, or service animal expenses, you can enter them here. But we'll click continue for now. So education expenses, uh, yes, we had qualified education expenses such as tuition. Um, we did not, I don't think Brooklyn, you paid student loans, but anyone who has already kind of left college and is paying back student loans, you actually get a 1098E statement from your student loan lender and you log into your account, you enter that. Personally, I entered, I think I paid $600 or more in interest um, over the past year. And so I got to say that it's up to $2,500 a year as a credit. So, but Brooklyn, I know you had qualified education expenses. So you uh, did pay for books and supplies. So you would say yes. And we had already filled that out. So we can click continue. Now, this is good. If you have a car, you click yes. And the amount that you paid for your car registration fees goes onto your taxes and you get a little bit of that um, property expense paid back. So click continue. And you say, yes, I did pay. If you have a registered vehicle, you had to pay the DMV. So you click yes. The Department of Motor Vehicles, um, you describe, uh, you add the amount that you paid for your fees. So I think mine was around $245 this year, but I would just look up from my bank statement or from my confirmation or that piece of paper the DMV sends you with how much you have to pay. Um, so you put that amount in here and you click continue and no other pro property taxes. And if you bought a hybrid vehicle, if you had to move for work or if you're a teacher, uh, more than half time, you can write out, you get a $250 educa educator um, credit. And if you moved for work or had expenses related to that, you enter them here. Otherwise, we just say no. Those are less common for transition aid to you. All right. And for the most part, people are going to say no to having additional tax payments. This really happens when, you know, you might own a home or have other property that you're writing about on your taxes. But for now, we're just getting started. For retirement investments, you would have to have a separate kind of IRA account. Um, you would get a form directly from your retirement services um, that is a tax document and you would enter that here if you do have one. Otherwise you just say no. And these are less common deductions. If anything does stand out to you as something that you would need, click yes. Otherwise most people will say no. So that's it. Brooklyn, was there any deductions that you had in mind that we missed? No, I think we covered them all. Nice, so looks good. Congratulations. We are about to do the next step of our taxes. All right, so for this part, most of these things don't apply to us, so we just click continue. And again, we'll just click continue at the bottom of the page, and again, continue. All right, and we already looked at the advanced child tax credit and the recovery rebate credit, so we did that during deductions, and we can press continue. All right, so this is the part of the tax return that's moving away from the federal return and into the California state tax return. So uh, if you had to pay through the California, covered California marketplace for your health insurance through the Affordable Care Act, you would say yes, but most current and former foster youth are eligible for Medi-Cal, full scope Medi-Cal, so they would say no and click continue. So now they're actually pulling everything from the federal return into the state return. And we're just gonna say, get started. So now in Tax Slayer, they make you, I believe, choose which state you're from. And here it is, California. And we have to answer some simple questions. So Brooklyn, 
it says, oh, you're head of household, right? So you just say yes. And you have to fill this out. Who are your qualifying children? And how much money did they make? And how many days of the year did they live with you? So 365 days. They don't make any money. They're babies. Mm -hmm. And they're not married. They're babies. So, and then we leave all these dates blank and click continue. Now we choose which county we're from in California and click continue. And it's just saying, is this address the same as what we entered in basic information? And so we say yes. And this is where we really live. Do we have health care coverage for everyone in the household? The answer is yes. Most uh, foster youth have uh, full scope Medi-Cal. But now this next question, we actually usually say no to because we haven't purchased insurance through the marketplace through Covered California yet. Um, so now there's a really important credit here that's really easy to breeze by. And so we want to make sure everyone says yes to the renter's credit who does pay rent at least six months out of the year in California in 2021. That's a $60 credit or 120 if you're married um, for renters. Everything else, you kind of just make sure it's correct and accurate and you click continue, but don't miss that renter's credit. It's really tricky. Okay, so that's it. You've now, because you spent all that time on your federal return, the state return was pretty quick. So. Um, that's your state return and you can click yes. So this is a summary of the state return. If for some reason you didn't do that renter's credit, you can click on credits and edit there and make sure you do see that renter's credit. But other than that, you just kind of scroll down and continue exit California return. So now you're seeing that uh, Brooklyn actually qualifies for the California Young Child Tax Credit and the California Earned Income Tax Credit and uh, has getting, is now getting uh, both a federal and state refund. In order to actually, uh, what you can do here is actually print a copy of your return for your records where you can say view return and save it. But we're gonna continue so that we e-file and, and submit this today. So here, I'm just gonna verify our email, make sure everything's good to go. Okay, so I need to go verify and see this little bar. So before we e-file, TaxLayer will ask you to verify your email and I'll send a link directly to your email. So you want to make sure that you log into your um, email and then click the link and then it'll bring you right back to TaxLayer um, saying that you verified your um, account and it's telling me, welcome back. Let's finish your 2021 tax return. And so from here, we could continue to e-file. I'm going to press yes. I'm done with my returns and I'm ready to file. So it gives you another rundown of all the details of your refund. Um, press continue. So here it's going to ask you if you have any uh, refund, how you would like it um, given to you, either direct deposit or a mail check. Keep in mind, a mail check will take a little longer versus direct deposit. So I always select direct deposit into my bank account. Let's continue. Same thing with state refund. I'm going to press direct deposit. For direct deposit, you can actually use um, like a cash app account, a prepaid debit card, or a bank account. So if you don't have a formal bank account, but you do have a prepaid, prepaid debit card, you can enter that. It's a lot faster than waiting for a paper check. And we would always encourage people to try direct deposit to make sure that that money lands into your account as soon as possible. Sign and file. And it's asking if I want to invest my refund in the press now. Uh, do you want the deposit to your full, full federal amount into your single bank account? Yes. If you have more than one bank account and you wanted to kind of split it among the different accounts, uh, you could do the split refund option. And here you're just going to enter in your bank information. So on this page is asking you for your ID information. It isn't required, but um, it's good to put it in because it helps the IRS with any fraud issues and things like that. and makes the process go just a little bit smoother. So if you do have it, um, always enter it in. If you are, I don't know, if you do have it, go ahead and enter it in. If you don't want to, it's fine too.
you have to click that and then enter what your adjusted gross income was, which is a certain box on that tax return. So you'll need to go and look at that 2020 copy of your return and find that number. This is a way of verifying that you are you, not somebody else, not trying to, someone's trying to steal your money or kind of commit tax frauds. This is another way that the IRS protects you, but it does take a couple of minutes to locate your 2020 tax return, find the AGI, the adjusted gross income, and type it in. So this is where it gets a little bit tricky. So Brooklyn, did you file in 2020? Yes. Okay, so you would say yes. And most people are filing a 1040. And here's where you put in your AGI from last year to verify. They make you double check it. And now they make you select a PIN. So this is a five digit number that's easy for you to remember that no one else would kind of maybe think of if the IRS ever has to contact you, they'll ask for this five digit PIN and you wanna keep track of it. So definitely write it down, keep it with your tax documents in a safe, locked, secure place. But that PIN is five digit number that you'll need to remember. Okay, so this is where you sign and file your return. So you just click that button and follow through, make sure to save a copy of your tax return, keep all of your tax documents together in a file for at least five years and stay organized. So that is it. You should be seeing that refund direct deposited into your bank account, which is within about two to three weeks. If anything was typed incorrectly or there was an error, you might see uh, the phrase like return rejected and you have to fix those errors and re-e-file. Otherwise, it'll just be accepted and you'll get your money. Um, if it is rejected and it wasn't an error, if it says duplicate return, you should reach out for some help because it might mean that somebody did use your information um, without your permission and claim some of your tax credits or claim your tax return money. And you'll wanna follow up with the IRS and paper file. So you'll print out this return that you created and send it to the IRS. But definitely talk to an attorney, talk to, the, talk to your tax site, or give us, a, a, give us an email and we'll connect you to get support around connecting with the IRS. Yeah, I think if you just wanna check the status of your refund, all you need to do is look at that email address associated with your tax layer account, and you should be able to check that by logging in and check the status. And um, yeah, and we hope that you, uh, you know, have a good time during tax season, get the most money you can, and make sure you're not paying uh, for tax services. You can use this free service anytime. Mm -hmm.